Hi guys and welcome back to the last part of study unit 3 hyperbolic system. So now we're doing the two dependent population. So now the two dependent population is basically unlike the independent one. You don't have like different sample sizes, different standard deviation, different uh, population mean and so on and so on. So here um, we have like one uh, or same uh, sample mean I mean sample uh, size and then uh, as always you have to read the scenario which is going to tell you whether it's left-sided whether it's right-sided or whether it's two-sided now uh, when we write the null and alternative hypothesis for this one it's different from when we write for two independent populations I'm going to show you uh, just now so here we're working with the differences like for example let's say now we give you guys a test you write a test and then after you write that test, then we give you a tutorial on the content of that test. And then after you wrote, uh, you, you got the tutorial, then you, we give you the same test to write again. And then we record the marks for before you got the tutorial and after you got the tutorial. So now we want to see if the tutorial had any impact on your marks for uh, that for that test, like on your on, on your performance. Now, um, if Let's say we're testing if uh, the tutorial had a negative impact. Let's say maybe we want to test if it reduced the marks. Then you're going to be a left-sided hypothesis. If we're testing if it uh, increased the marks, then it's going to be a right-sided hypothesis. Now, when we're dealing with this, like I said, we're, right, we, we, we're working with the differences. But we know that the null hypothesis is always H0 and the alternative hypothesis is always H0. A. It's always H A. So this is going to be your null hypothesis, and then this is going to be your alternative hypothesis. Now we're working with the differences, like I said. So we're going to work with the average difference. Average difference. D stands for difference. Average difference, and then you say is equal to zero for the null hypothesis. Basically meaning that in the null hypothesis we say that the in a, the example that I just gave, we saying that the tutorial didn't have any effect. It didn't have any impact on the marks. The marks were just the same before or after. And then with the alternative, it will depend if we're saying that uh, the, prog uh, the, the, the tutorial increased. If we say the pro tutorial increased, then it's going to be greater than zero. If we're saying the uh, tutorial decreased, going to be less than zero. If we're saying the tutorial had no uh, had an impact, but we don't say whether it increased or it decreased. Let's say we just say the tutorial changed the marks, per, per, for example. So it's just going to be, it is not equal to. So that is when you know that you're dealing with uh, right-sided, left-sided, or two-sided. Now I'm just going to erase this, and I will do an example that is uh, practical like the one we have here. So that was just to uh, explain the difference in writing the null and alternative hypothesis for two dependent populations. So a, qu a question that we have here says, a manager at a certain company wants to adopt a lunchtime exercise program to improve his workers' health. The records of their medical expenses were recorded in thousands of rents for 12 months before and after the exercise program. So now, sometimes uh, students ask me, how do you know? Because you said the sample size is the same. It's going to be one sample size. How do you know the difference between one population and two dependent populations? So now, here's a key weight when it comes to the two dependent populations. You're going to see with the weight before and after. Each and every time you read a scenario and you see before and after, just know that it's the same population or the population size, um, some sample size, which was tested before a certain program, a certain exercise, a certain tutorial, like example I just gave, and then there will be after that as well. So we want to test if there was an impact of that particular uh, program with that particular uh, exercise assessment whatever now in this case we're testing if the program increased so a manager is certain person wants to adopt a certain lifetime program to improve his workers health so we want to know if the program that he's he's uh he's adopting is going to improve the health now they say determine at five percent uh significance level whether the program reduced their medical expenses now we want to know if it improved their health, but we are basing our test on whether the program reduced their medical expenses. So now, because they say determine at 5% significance level, this is where our test is based on. 
the the weight reduced the weight reduced so it it can be a tricky one because there's also the weight improve here so you may ask yourself how do you know that okay this is going to be the case so our test is based on the the expenses you remember they said the records of their medical expenses so now we are testing if the uh, the the program reduced their medical expenses meaning that our average difference our average uh difference we're going to say our average difference average difference is less than zero our average difference is less than zero because we're saying that that program reduced their medical expenses that is where the question is based on all right so now step number two as you know you specify the significance level and test statistic significance level alpha is equal to 0 0.05 in this case 0 0.05 the test statistic as always we have two for large sample and small sample so now for large sample we said z is equal to is going to be the d bar d bar meaning that the average of the differences over the standard deviation of the differences as d divided by the square root of n and then for a small sample is also t equals the d bar d bar over the standard deviation of the differences as d divided by the square root of n as well so now looking at these two formulas they are the same they're the same but the difference is the z and the t so you have to uh know which one to use so now when it comes to two dependent populations they are most likely going to give you a small sample and i'm gonna explain the difference uh, i mean the reason for that just now right so now we say this is the average difference this is the standard deviation of the difference so now in most cases they will give them to you and if they don't then you have to know how to calculate them yourself so now for you to get the average difference the average is just the mean first of all you're going to be having uh the expenses before and the expenses after and then after that this is uh, the differences so how do you get the differences you say this minus this you take before and you subtract after just like let me just show you with the calculator you're going to say 68 minus 59 and then you're going to get 9 that's how they got this 9 to get this 2 44 minus 42 that's how they got that 2 so meaning that to get the value of a over here which is a question uh, calculate the missing difference a and b in the table to get the value of a you say 30 minus 20 which is going to be equal to 10 and then 58 minus 62 is equal to minus 4 so that is how you calculate the differences 35 minus 25 is 10 33 minus minus 30 is 3 52 minus 56 is minus 4 69 minus 62 is 7 23 minus 25 is minus 2 that's how you find the the differences so now in most cases they will give you a small sample for this the reason being that you have to calculate the differences after calculating the differences you have to find the average difference and then after finding the average difference you have to find the standard deviation of the differences before you can actually substitute here and calculate the test statistic but in some cases they'll give them to you like in this case here they gave us the d bar and also gave us the sd the standard deviation of the differences but then now let's say they didn't give them to you how do you calculate them you use your calculator to do that and then you just say mode then you press 2 you tell your calculator i'm doing statistics you press 2 then you press 1 and then you put this information of the differences the, di the information of the difference because we want the average of the differences so you're going to say 9 equal and then you're going to say 2 equal 10 equal minus 4 equal uh 10 equal 3 3 equal minus 4 equal uh 7 equal minus 2 equal okay so when you're done you press ac then you want to press shift you press 1 then you press uh 5 on your on your calculator it's going to be 4 so on my calculator is 5 and then you look for x bar because of it said x like but we're looking for d bar basically so that is the information for the d bar so you're going to say 2 then you press equal 3.444 3.444 over here that's how they found that value so if they didn't find it for you this is how you find it now another way you can just add everything here and divide by 9 in this case because you have 9 uh, variables so you can just say uh, you can just say uh, 9 plus 
plus 10 minus say 9 plus 2 plus 10 minus 4 plus 10 plus 3 minus 4 plus 7 minus 2 you get everything when I say equal then you divide by you divide by 9 and then you get 3.444 that's how they got that 3.444 so those are the two ways that you can find that if they didn't give them to you now for the standard deviation I re highly recommend that you use the calculator for that and after using the calculator you can just say SD equals if they ask you uh, maybe they ask you to calculate it in brackets you just say uh, calculated using the calculator or determined using the calculator how you do that the following the, 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 the same steps that you followed that uh, mode and then you want to press 2 then 1 and then you input the information in the calculator you do that but since the information is still there I can just press shift then press 1 and then I can go to uh, 5 you're gonna go to 4 on your side then you press 4 on your side is written SX so here is something different because it's an electronic com uh, scientific calculator then you're gonna press equal and that is 5.833 that's how they got that 5.833 over there for so for this one just strictly use your calculator okay so that's how you would find your average difference and your standard division difference and then n is just given as uh, the sample size in this case is 9 so it's going to be n equals 9. Now, to calculate the test statistic, we're going to use t because it's a small sample. We're going to say t is equal to, uh, we're going to say 3.4. Uh, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I'm going to say the square root of 9 over here. So here's 3.44. Four. Uh, divide by standard deviation of difference was uh, 5.833 5.833 divide by the square root of 9 so now this is equal to you go to your calculator and then now you you substitute and calculate everything 3.34 over 5.8 double 3 uh, divide by divide by the square root of 9 the answer is 1.771. 1.771. 1 1.771, that's how you find the test statistic. After finding the test statistic, they'll give you a p value and then they'll ask you to make a decision and draw conclusions based on that, as always. So now the p value is 0 0.0484. And we know our alpha is 0 0.05. So p value 0 0.04 is less than 0 0.05. So you're going to say the p value is less than alpha alpha therefore you do what you you reject you reject you reject the you reject the null hypothesis you reject the null hypothesis and now to to draw conclusions since we rejected the null hypothesis then you can say there there is enough a evidence there's enough evidence that the program reduced their uh, their medical expenses. There's enough evidence to say that the program reduced their medical expenses. You can say that. You can also say that. You can also say that. Uh, there is enough evidence evidence that the program improved improved their health remember when you write the, uh, the 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 conclusion you must write it based on the initial statement so now the initial statement was that we are testing if the program reduced their medical expenses ne but then now, if the program reduced their medical expenses, it also means that it improved their health. Because if now you are healthier, then it means you don't have to uh, spend more on your medical uh, uh, products and stuff like that. So now, this is how you would write your uh, conclusion in, in the end. So now remember, they might give you the differences, they might not. So it means if they just gave you before and after information, then you have to find the differences yourself by subtracting uh, you're taking uh, 
before and subtracting after from there you do the average and the standard deviation like i showed you how they got this and then from there you calculate the test statistic then they'll give you the p-value you, you just compare it against the level and see which is it less or is it greater then you make a decision and then you draw conclusions that is all about study unit three and uh if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you don't like it just give it a thumbs up anyway and i'll see you guys in the next video on study unit four analysis of variance take care guys and good luck with your test